Hello and welcome to Bioinformatics and Computational Biology Lectures. This is Lecture 4 in the Reverse Vaccinology Series. In the Reverse Vaccinology Series, we are designing the D and T cells multi-epitope subunit vaccine for the SARS coronavirus 2. The SARS coronavirus 2 is responsible for the recent global pandemic and has caused a devastating effect across the world. In this series, we were using the spike glycoprotein of the SARS coronavirus 2 to design an effective and stable vaccine using the reverse vaccinology approach. Before we move on to this lecture, first we will talk a little bit about what we did previously. In reverse vaccinology lecture 1, we talked about vaccines, the different types of vaccines, and the introduction to reverse vaccinology what is reverse vaccinology and the advantages of the reverse vaccinology over conventional approaches of vaccine development. In reverse vaccinology lecture 2, we talked about SARS coronavirus 2, how we select a candidate protein and then how we predict CTL epitopes for the candidate proteins and then the selection of best CTL epitopes for, this, uh, for the candidate protein. In this case, the spike glycoprotein. And then in the next lecture, we predicted the HDL epitopes for the spike glycoprotein and selected the best HDL epitopes to design a BNT cell multi epitope subunit vaccine. In this lecture, we will construct a vaccine sequence using the best CTL and HDL epitopes. We will check its allergenicity and antigenicity and then the biochemical properties of the vaccine that we will be constructed in this lecture. So uh, how we will uh, construct the vaccine sequence in this lecture? Uh, we will be uh, constructing the vaccine sequence manually using uh, the uh, notepad plus plus. We will bring together the best CDL epitopes and the best HDL epitopes that we uh, selected. The CDL epitopes will be joined together using the AAY linker and the HDL epitopes will be joined using the GPGPG linker. Other than that, an adjuvant will be added to boost immunogenicity of the vaccine. And then an adjuvant, adjuvant will be joined using EAAK linker to the vaccine sequence. We will check allergenicity using the Alfred server. And then for antigenicity prediction, we will be uh, using the Vexigen server and then uh, for the physiochemical properties of the vaccine sequence we will be using the fraud farm server the different parameters that we will be looking at to molecular weight that needs to be between 30 and 70 kilodalton the theoretical pi the half-life the instability index and the grand average of hydropathy or simply known as gravy so now let's move on to vaccine design so here you can see that uh, in previous uh, lecture I told you that uh, apart from the spike glycoprotein we will need three or four different proteins um, for designing a vaccine. So here in this case I have selected the ORF1 AB glycoprotein polyprotein of the SARS coronavirus to the ORF3 A polyprotein, the membrane glycoprotein and as you know the spike glycoprotein. So I have selected the uh, CTL epitopes and HTL epitopes the same way as I uh, described in earlier uh, lecture. Here you can see the CTL epitopes uh, for the ORF1 AB polyprotein and the HTL epitopes for the ORF1 AB polyprotein. This is the ORF1 AB polyprotein and the gene bank ID. I have placed the CTL epitopes and then the HTL epitopes. You can see I have selected uh, three CTL epitopes for the ORF1AB polyprotein. And all of these three uh, CTL epitopes completes the criteria, the selection uh, criteria. And then the two HTL epitopes, these uh, epitopes also complete the criteria for selection. Then you can see the ORF3A uh, protein. Here I have selected uh, three CTL epitopes and three HTL epitopes that qualifies our uh, criteria. 
and then here you can see the membrane glycoprotein here i have selected uh, three cpl epitopes and four hdl epitopes for the membrane glycoprotein and uh, for the spike glycoprotein and here i have selected two ctl and two hdl epitopes so uh, you must keep the selection of epitopes uh, between you know, for each protein uh, minimum two and maximum three or four for each protein and the CTL epitopes and the HDL epitopes. The reason for selection of uh, these epitopes is that uh, we have to uh, keep in mind that the uh, molecular weight of the final vaccine needs to be uh, between 30 to 70 kilodalton. So for that reason we have to select uh, three or uh, two CTL and HDL epitopes for each protein. Here you can see the CTL epitopes of the ORF1 AB protein then that uh, I will be using to construct a vaccine sequence. You must have to keep all of these in sequence. As you can see, first I have placed the ORF1 AB and then the ORF3A and then the membrane glycoprotein and the spike. Here I will uh, now uh, copy the CTL epitopes of the ORF1 AB and polyprotein to a new uh, file. Here. So I have placed the epitopes. Now I will copy the CTL epitopes of the ORF3A protein. So from here I will copy the CTL epitopes that I have selected. So here we go. I will paste it right below the uh, previous three epitopes for the ORF1AB and copy the CTL epitopes that I have selected for the membrane glycoprotein. From here I will copy and paste it below the ORF3A. Keep in mind that you have to do it in sequence. First the ORF1AB, ORF3A and then the membrane glycoprotein. Now I will select from here the spike glycoprotein CTL epitopes paste it below here. So here I have uh, pasted all of them. As you can see, these three for the ORF1 AB, and then three for the ORF3 A, and then three for the membrane glycoprotein, and two for the spike glycoprotein. So remember this sequence that you have to put all of the epitopes in sequence. Now we will uh, add the AAY linker. Uh, keep in mind that the it should be capital letters AAY and the end of each CTL epitopes as I have placed here as you can see a, a Y linker at the end of each uh, CTL epitope and so on for the rest of the epitopes but remember that for the last CTL epitope that you have you have to place the GPGPG -E linker because that last will be linked to the uh, HTL epitope of the ORF1 AB so for that reason you do not need to put a, a Y linker at the end of the last CTL epitope here as you you can see here that I have placed the GPGPG -GP linker at the end of last epitope and now I will select the HTL epitopes the HTL epitopes will be uh, in the same sequence as the CTL epitope first the ORF1 AB and then uh, uh, followed by ORF3 A membrane glycoprotein and then spine glycoprotein here I have pasted the ORF1 um, AB HTL epitopes so now here as you can see the GPGP -GP gene linker at the end of last CTL epitopes and now I will uh, place the HTL epitope as you can see these are the CTL epitopes and these are the HTL at the end of HTL now I am uh, placing the GPGP uh, gene -GP linkers keep in mind that all of the linkers will be in uh, will be capital letters here you can see and then go on for the rest of the epitopes i have already done that so i will show you here how here here you can see that all of the ctl epitopes as you can see from here all of the ctl epitopes you can see a a y linker at the end of every one all of the ctl epitopes except for the last ctl epitopes that we have gp gp g linker at the end of the last ctl epitope and then you can see the rest of the HTL epitopes in the same sequence at the end of each HTL epitopes and the end of last.
last week in epitopes. But the last HTL epitopes, here the sequence, the vaccine sequence ends. So we do not need to put a linker here. So uh, in, uh, so this is uh, empty. We, I haven't written a linker here. This is the vaccine sequence. These are the selected uh, HTL epitopes and the uh, CTL epitopes with uh, its respective linker and in the same sequence as I told you that the ORF1AB then followed by the ORF3A then the membrane glycoprotein and then the spike glycoprotein here this sequence you can see this is the adjuvant the adjuvant uh, increases the immune response to the vaccine and this is the uh, EAAK linker that will be used to link the adjuvant to the vaccine sequence now why I have selected this uh, adjuvant. You can see in this paper, um, as you can see that the um, mu um, mammalian beta dependsin can induce mucosal immunity against HIV-1. So I said that if it is inducing, uh, here is the title of the paper, um, and so I said that uh, if this uh, beta dependsin is inducing immunity against the HIV-1, so I can use that for the SARS coronavirus uh, too as well because that is also a virus and uh, it can actively uh, induce uh, immunity um, uh, boost immunity of our vaccine sequence so that's why I'm using as a it is an adjuvant so here you can see all of the uh, epitopes here is the adjuvant sequence and mammalian beta dependsin and now you can see the sequence in the ORF1AB first then second of a uh, CTL of the ORF1AB and then uh, you can see third and then the uh, fourth uh, uh, each have the linkers in between the AAY linker then the fourth and the four uh, CTL epitopes and the fifth and the sixth you can see the sequence uh, as I told you that all of these epitopes are placed in sequence and then you can see the HTL epitopes here from the ORF 1AB the CTL epitope portion was started from the ORF 1AB CTL epitopes and in the same way the HTL epitopes portion will be started from the ORF 1AB in the HTL epitopes you can see here now I will remove the space between the linkers and epitopes so that uh, we can get our final uh, sequence so here I will keep on removing the spaces so be careful when you are removing the space uh, that is because um, if you remove a single uh, uh, alphabet that represents an amino acid that means you have deleted an amino acid or you insert an extra amino acid while typing the linker that means you have added an extra amino acid that will uh, highly affect that will negatively affect the uh, immunogenicity of the vaccine and the effectiveness of this vaccine now here I have uh, removed the spaces and now we have got the uh, sequence as you can see the number of amino acids and our vaccine sequence now we will move on and uh, predict the different parameters of the vaccine so now in this vaccine all of the CTL epitopes and HTL epitopes we have uh, placed all of the linkers uh, are in place the adjuvant we have attached all of the linkers no extra mm, uh, alphabet added by mistake not removed so now I will copy it and paste and the vaccine server do not forget to select the virus and then submit after you submit it you will get the score for it here you can see it's the probable antigen that means it can induce immune response and uh, it uh, passes the criteria and then the same sequence will be uh, pasted in the Alfred server. I have already done that. As you can see, it's a non-allergen, minus 0.83. And the score lower than minus 0.4 indicates that the vaccine is uh, non-allergenic. Paste the sequence here and submit. Here you get the results for the vaccine sequence. See vaccine is non-allergenic that means it, it qualifies the parameters and uh, then we will move on to the uh, physiochemical parameters of the vaccine 
in the broadcom server you have to place the vaccine sequence and run analysis it will provide you the result in a few moments here you can see the number of amino acids in the vaccine here as you can see that this is written in dalton 39000 dalton mean 39 kilo dalton so our vaccine sequence is 39.5 that falls between 30 and 70 that means it can be easily isolated and the theoretical pi of 9.6 means that the vaccine is basic in nature now here you can see the other parameters the negatively charged uh, residues in the vaccine 16 and then the positively charged uh, residues in the vaccine the other parameters as you can see the number of atoms and that formula and but the important thing is the half-life you can see here the half-life and E. coli at the end of this series we will be reverse translating and uh, cloning this sequence in the E. coli so that is mustard the half-life is greater than 10 hours in E. coli system now as you can see here as I um, I will tell you that the uh, vaccine having a stability index less than uh, 40 means that it is stable here you can see the vaccine is stable and uh, here the aliphatic index the aliphatic index greater than 70 or 75 means the vaccine is the vaccine sequence is uh, thermostable it uh, shows the thermostability and uh, here now you can see the gravy grand average of hydropathicity that is in between minus 2 and plus 2 and uh, lower than 0 means and minus it means that the vaccine sequence is hydropelic and above 0 that means uh, 1 or 2 or that is above 2 means that the vaccine sequence is uh, hydrophobic uh, in nature so these were uh, all of the parameters uh, here you can see if uh, one of the parameter uh, is not uh, according to the uh, set as I have mentioned then you have to change the amine and the peptides the epitopes to make it uh, to uh, qualify all of these parameters that's all for the lecture